The Honorable Judge Oscar Hale Jr. presiding. <coughs> Good morning. All right, we're ready for the jury. State ready. defense, defense ready. Defense ready. Right. Let's bring the jurors in, please. You may be seated. Good morning. Hope everyone had a good weekend. State ready? State ready, Your Honor. Defense ready. ready. Okay. Your Honor, this morning's uh, examination will be conducted by ADA Rogelio Soto, and the state will call uh, Brandon Stern as their first uh, witness. Brandon Stern? Brandon Stern. Good morning, sir. You're, you're under the same oath you previously took, sir. You, you may take the witness down. Please. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. You may proceed. Yes. For the record, I'll have this for the state. Deputy Stern, can you please state your complete name for the record? My name is Brandon Stern. And Deputy Stern, you, you've previously testified in, in this court, correct? Yes. Okay. You previously testified that you assisted in the investigations of this case, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, more so with the collection of evidence, correct? Yes. And you assisted the custodians of evidence, Investigator Ugarte and Investigator Nenke, correct? Yes. Okay. I want to ask you about the crime scene of Guiselda Hernandez. Yes. Did you assist in that crime scene? Yes, I did. The, that crime scene on September 15th of 2018? Yes. Okay. And where was that crime scene located at? That was on uh, IH 35 at the 22 mile marker. File marker 22? Yes. Okay. And that day, in, when you were assisting, what roles were you performing? Just uh, evidence collection and assisting Investigator Ninka in evidence collection. Okay. And did you all recover anything that day? Yes, we did. What did you all recover? I believe it was three 40 Smith & Wesson uh, casings mm -hmm. and bullet fragments. Okay. Permission to approach, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. All right. Deputy Stern, I'm going to show you this envelope. I'm going to remove the items inside. Okay. Now, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 55 and 56, okay? Um, and I'm also going to show you these envelopes, okay? Yes. Now, states 55 and 56. When and where did you first see these items? Um, when we, when, um, we arrived on scene, 
at the 22 mall marker there on IH35. Okay. And what did you do after you saw these items? We, um, we marked them with um, tags and we photographed them. Okay. And now, how do you know that these are the items that you recovered that day? Because um, my name is on the, on the packaging that they were, they were put in. Okay. Whose signature is that? That's mine. Okay. And that signature? Yeah, that's also mine. Okay. And do you recognize this packaging? Yes. How do, uh, and I know you said you um, recognize it because of your signature, but what else, if anything, allows you to recognize it that it's related to this case? Um, the date that it was collected and the time it was collected. And the location at which, where it was collected also. And a, uh, a brief you know, description of, of what was in the package. Okay. And have these items been altered in any shape or form? No. Are they in the same or similar condition as to when they were collected? Yes. Thank you. Your Honor, let the record reflect that I'm going to tender to defense what has been marked as State's Exhibit 55 and 56, the bullet fragments from Mount Marker 22, and we'll be offering it into evidence. Are you offering the envelope separately or? Yes, Your Honor. Are you going to label those separately or only because I think 55 and 56 were previously identified but without the envelope first? Correct, Your Honor. They just needed to be admitted and we'll be marking the envelopes as 55A and 56A, Your Honor, for identification purposes. Okay, wait. And take them over there briefly. Uh, Stern. Um, just briefly, because I wasn't up here, but so it appears to me that States Exhibit 55 was an envelope 55A, and States Exhibit 56 was an envelope 56A. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, and then uh, 55. 55A, 56, and 56A were in this bigger envelope. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Now, um, the other day I asked you, as far as the bullet fragments, uh, they themselves, uh, the ones inside 55 and 56, uh, you can't identify them specifically as being the ones that you picked up out on, on that date. I mean, from, from looking at them just individually. No, I, I wouldn't okay. be able to. And I understand. So, so then, but when, when, who placed, let's say, 55 inside 55A? Was it you or, or, or Ugarte or Ninko? Do you remember? Who, I'm sorry. Who specifically picked who, who up? Who placed this baggie inside this envelope? Well, who picked up the fragment, placed it inside this bag that's marked 55, and then who placed it inside 55A? You recall? No. Okay. The same goes for 56 and 56A? No. Okay. And um, out at the scene, do you know that you all make a diagram to show where these were? I mean, if you recall. I don't believe so. Okay. And then uh, the other thing is, since uh, when you say that your name is here, it, you see where it says in, in print investigator, INV Stern, INV Stern. Yes. Um, and 
what, what is that supposed to indicate to you? To indicate that I that I found these and I placed them in the pipe. Okay. And then since then, there's all these markings. You see that like here, there's a 1031.18 and a, like initials. These weren't there when you placed them in here, right? No, sir, they were not. So since the date that you collected them, uh, these have been opened, I would imagine, and then placed back in here. Is that accurate? I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would say yes. Okay. Now, this red evidence tape on each one of them, that, that's, is that Webb County or is that someone else's also? Um, I, I believe that's, that's Webb County. We do have evidence tape that's red like that. Okay, but these markings, were, there, were they there, the ones that were the, the evidence tape when you placed uh, 55 and 56 into 55A and 56A? No. No. Okay. Uh, Judge, we would submit that at this time they're not relevant. They're still subject to the chain. And so they're they're premature until we find out where they went, who opened them, who took them out, and the like. So our objection is that relevance and change of custody. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Your Honor, Investigator Stern, it, he's marked these bags. He's marked them that he was the one that placed them in there. These are for record keeping purposes, Your Honor. It's marked where the location where it was. He's already testified that he worked hand in hand with both Investigator Nenke and Investigator Ugarte in the collection of evidence at these scenes, Your Honor. He's able to identify his signature. It's linked to both bullet fragments that were located there, Your Honor. We've established the chain. He's a sponsoring witness. He has personal knowledge. He has seen them. He identified them. He remembers that those were the casing, the bullet fragments that were cased, recovered that day, Judge. If, if, if I may, Your Honor, uh, at least the way I understand it, we're going through the chain, and at some point, the last person that opened them and did whatever, that's when they become admissible. I understand that they have to show the chain and identify them, but they're not admissible at this time. Well, uh, as far as admissibility um, and the chain, I think there are two, two different issues. I'm going to overrule the, the relevance objection. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the chain that goes to the weight for the jury. I will, um, the, uh, as far as admissibility for the jury's consideration, uh, exhibit 50, 55, 56, 55A, and 56A are admitted into evidence at this time. Your Honor, we could have a, a brief moment, Judge. Investigator Stern, I'm going to show you what has been marked as 167, 168, and 169. Okay? Yes. Do you recognize these photos? Yes. How do you recognize these photos? I, I was there when they were taken. Okay, and is 167 a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? Yes. Same question with 168. Is it a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? Yes. Same with State Exhibit 169. Is it a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? Yes. Okay. Let the record reflect, Your Honor. I'm going to tender to defense what has been marked in State Exhibit 167, 68, and 69 for inspection, and we offer it into evidence.
clarification, 167, 168, 169. So 167. States exhibits 167 and 168 at this time are admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, State will withdraw State Exhibit 169. Permission to publish on the Elmo, Your Honor? You may. Deputy Stern, I'm showing you what's already been admitted as States Exhibit 167 and 168. Um, can you please describe to the jury um, what these photos entail? These are three different, um, well, two, two different pictures mm -hmm. with three different uh, 40 caliber, 40 Smith and Wesson caliber casings. Okay. And where were these photos taken at? At, on the crime scene at IH 35 with a 22 mile marker. Okay. And I'm just for per permission to publish the jury. Okay. okay, I'm showing what's been marked as case exhibit 168. And what is that item there that's identified? That's a 40, 40 cal, 40 Smith and Wesson uh, casing. Okay. And I'll show you what's been marked as state exhibit 167. What does this photo appear to show? Two, two casings of uh, 40 Smith and Wesson. Okay, and, and how are they identified there? They're identified with uh, orange paint. And why do you all do that? To, so when we take pictures, they're, they stand out a little bit easier. Okay. Thank you. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Nothing, fine. No questions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You may sit down. Thank you. Jose Ugarte, Your Honor. Jose Ugarte. Don't forget your mic, counsel. For the record, the state is 
calling investigator Jose Ugarte. Oh, Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. You have not been previously sworn, correct? Can you, can you raise your right hand? Do you sign for the testimony you're going to give during this trial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Thanks. Okay, you may take the witness now. Please. Can I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Thank you. Investigator Ugarte, can you please state your name for the record? Jose Manuel Ugarte. Okay, and where are you currently employed? At Texas State International University Police Department. Okay, and how long have you been a peace officer for? Uh, 19, since 1994, approximately 28 years. Okay, and have you always been employed by the Texas A&M International University Police Department? No, sir. Okay, where were you employed prior to that? At the White Pine Sheriff Department. Okay, and prior to that? At Laredo Police Department. Okay. Um, were you involved in any service prior to that? Was a medical specialist in, in, in the U.S. Army. Okay. So, I want to take you back. I want to go back to the month of September 2018. At that time, who, whom were you employed by? At the Webb County Sheriff's Department. Okay. And during that time at the Webb County Sheriff's Office, what position did you have? What's this? Uh, Crime scene investigator and as, as also assisted in the uh, for the evidence in the evidence the evidence room. Okay, and um, assisting in the evidence room, what did you do? And uh, in the evidence room, yes, I I, uh, I assisted a investigator investigator Nenke on um, uh, on properly storing evidence. Okay. Did you serve as a custodian of evidence? Yes, sir. All right. Um, now, did you receive any trainings or certifications uh, in regards to evidence collection? Yes, I did, sir. Okay, can you please describe that? On, on the evidence collection, uh, I, I, I took a numerous classes with, with, the, with multiple instructors while I was in the, the police department. Okay. Now, in 2018, for purposes of clarification, who were the custodians of evidence at that time? That, that'll be myself and Investigator Nenke. Okay. Now, is it safe to say that you two worked hand in hand sometimes in, in processing scenes? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you can you describe to us how you would go about in the collection of evidence at these scenes? I would go to the scene and uh, I would uh, I would look for evidence and once the evidence was was uh, identified was identified, identified I, 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 I started uh, I took photographs and, and pick up the evidence and then it was taken to the to the Wake Sheriff office to, to be logged in into our system. Okay, and now after you log it in, how do you go about keeping the evidence organized? It's given a, uh, they're given a tag number. Okay. Um, and is what does that tag number, what's the purpose of that tag number? To, to show what, where, where, the, where the item came from. Right. Now, do you know why you're here today? Yes, sir. Okay. Why are you here today? Uh, for an, some incidents that occurred on uh, September, on, 
uh, September of 2018. Okay. Did you assist in the investigation of this case in 2018? Yes, I did, sir. How did you assist in the investigation of this case? I was assigned to, to the Texas Ranger, and he directed me to to process the, the scene. So, an investigator, Ugarte, if you could please explain to the jury, um, who went about assisting you in processing these scenes? On, uh, on, on the several crime scenes, it, it was Investigator Nenke and Investigator Stern. And investigator Stern only assisted me on, on one crime scene. Okay. Now, I want to take you back to the date of September 3rd of 2018. Okay. Um, can you explain to the jury what you did that day in regards to this case? When I, when I got to, on that day, when, uh, when I got to the scene, I, I processed the scene by taking photographs, collecting evidence, and taking the evidence to, to, to uh, our office so, so it could be logged in. And this was the, the crime scene that took place on Jeffries Road? That is correct, sir. Okay. And this is the crime scene of Melissa Ramirez? Yes, sir. Okay. So you said you discovered casings at this scene? That is correct. I, I discovered two. Permission to approach, Your Honor? Yes. All right, Mr. Guerrero. I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 41 and 42. Okay. Now, I'm showing you 41 and 42. Do you recognize these items? Oh, yes, I do, sir. Okay. When and where did you first see these items? September the 3rd, 2018, okay. by Jeffers Road. Okay, and what did you do once you discovered these items? They were properly collected and, and, and taken to the McPartland Sheriff's Office so it could be logged in into our system. All right, and now, how do you know that these are the items that you recovered that day? A case number, my initials, and my handwriting. Okay, and are, are, are those your initials right there on these two items? That is correct, sir. Have these items been altered in any shape or form? Uh, no, sir. Um, are they in the same or similar condition as to when they were recovered? Yes, sir. How did these items get to the courtroom here today? They were brought in by uh, Sergeant Castillo, which which happens to be the, the custodian of uh, evidence at the White County Sheriff's Office. Your Honor, let the record reflect I'm tendering to defense what has been marked as states exhibit 41 and 42 for inspection, and we offer them into evidence. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay, with regards again to States Exhibit 41 and 42, uh, I see that, let's see, your, your initials are somewhere here? Over here, sir. Right there. Okay. And they're here too, right? Yes, sir. Now, um, you can tell that these items have been reopened and resealed, correct? Yes, sir. So, since the date back in on the 3rd, I would imagine, of 18, September the 3rd of 18, that you locked them into the uh, you logged them into the uh, evidence room. Yes, sir. They since have left, have they not? Uh, to a DPS lab. Okay. And, uh, did you take them to the CP DPS lab? Um, more like they did. Okay, but you don't know that for a fact. Uh, uh, no, I need to I need to check the lab submittals. Okay, and uh, and then someone at the lab took them took them out did whatever they do with them, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and. Uh, uh, right now, I know that these are not open. Uh, you don't know what this lab person put back in here from, from your personal knowledge right now. That is correct. Yes, okay. Uh, again, Your Honor, our objection is that right now uh, they're not relevant uh, and uh, the chain of custody, the complete chain of custody has not been established. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. 
Your Honor, this objection only serves to confuse the jury, Your Honor. Well, Your Honor, I'm going to object to sidebar remarks by the prosecutor and yeah. the court uh, to, and, uh, respond to the objection. Talking sure. the defendant over the shoulder of the counsel. Oh, okay. Any questions, Ms. Powell, Your Honor? Oh, did I? Your Honor, he's the sponsoring witness. He recovered these items as to where they went afterwards. Where, where, we're establishing the first link in the chain, Your Honor. He's able to identify these these items. His initials are on the items. He recovered the items. There's a description on this uh, on these uh, evidence bags uh, made by Investigator Ucarta, Your Honor. He has personal knowledge. He was there that day. He describes how he went about it in collecting these items, Your Honor. May, 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 I, may we approach just so I can make a point to the court outside the presence of the jury? Your Honor? Forty-two are admitted into evidence at this time for the jury's consideration. So, Investigator Ugarte, you said that you assisted at the scene uh, on Jeffrey's road. And what other functions did you serve at that scene? Permission to approach, Sharon. Okay. Investigator Roberto Antonio was been previously admitted. As states 41 and 42. Now, Please explain to the jury um, what this is right here, please. I'm look containing a, a 40 caliber casing. Okay, and, and where was this caliber, uh, this casing located? It was located at 500 Jeffries Road. At 500 Jeffries Road? Yes, sir. Okay, and this caliber, um, it's what caliber of, of casing is it? 40 caliber. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what's been previously marked and admitted into evidence as State's Exhibit 41. Okay, there's the State's Exhibit number 41. Now, same question. Can you please read to the jury what this says? The 500 Jeffries Road, one Smith and Western 40 caliber case. Okay. And the 500 Jeffries Road, that is in relation to the crime scene of Melissa, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now, let's let's move on. But I'd like to go in, in sequential order. Did you assist at the next crime scene involved in this case? On the one two on the. On 255, yes, sir, I did. Okay, and that's the crime scene of Claudine Luera? Yes, sir. All right. And what tasks um, did you take on that day at the crime scene of Claudine Luera? I, I assisted the Texas Ranger in by by collecting evidence. And uh, in, in the process of collecting evidence, I 
I collected a a, a tire cast, uh, some cell phones, two casings, a purse, a metal pipe, and uh, after collecting the, that evidence, and some some tennis shoes also. After collecting the evidence, they were taken to the to uh, our office, so so it could be logged in into our system and, and property stored. Okay. Did, did you take photos as well? Yes, sir. All right. Um, permission to approach, Arn. Okay. So. Investigator Ugarte, I'm going to show you this envelope here. Um, so I'm going to remove the contents. I'm going to show you what has been marked previously as State Exhibit 50 and 51. Okay. Um, I'm going to show them to you right now. All right. Okay. When and where did you first see these items? September 8th. Uh, uh, September 13th, 2018. September 3rd, 2018. Yes, sir. Okay. What about State's Exhibit 50? Same date. September 13, 2018. Yes, sir. Okay. What did you do once you recovered these items? Once I, re I recovered them, I, I took them to, to our office to be, so it could be logged into our system and given a tag number. Okay. And how do you know that these are the items that you recovered that day? M my handwriting, my initials. Okay. The case number. And that's your name over the tape, correct? That or, is correct, sir. Sorry, your initials. Yes. Okay. And these items haven't been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. Are they in the same or a similar condition as to when they were recovered? That is correct, sir. Okay. Your Honor, let the record reflect that I will be keeping to defense what has been marked as State's Exhibit 51 and 52. Sorry, 50 and 51. I apologize, Your Honor. 50 and 51 for inspection. Are you going to mark uh, any of those envelopes also? Yes, Your Honor. I'll mark the envelope. We'll, we'll mark it as 58. 58. to 50 and 51 we would object uh, uh, to relevance at this time and that uh, the lack of chain of custody okay. um, objections overruled at this time the state's exhibits um, 50 51 and you're offering 58 and 58 yes they'll be admitted into evidence getting warmed up. Um, you said you also performed another task at the crime scene? Yes, I did, sir. What task was that? <coughs> tire cast. A tire cast? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you this box, okay? Do you recognize? And we're going to be marking this box as 63A, State's Exhibit 63A for identification purposes, Your Honor. Um, I'm showing you this box. Do you recognize this box? Yes, I do, sir. Okay. How do you recognize this box? My initials, case number, the tag. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to show you the packaging. Do you recognize the packaging? Yes, sir. How do you recognize this packaging? It, it, it was packaged by uh, at, at, at the DPS Crime Lab. Okay. And now, I'm showing you what's been marked as State Exhibit 63. Um, when and where did you recover this item? On the same date, September 13, 2018. September 13, 2018? Yes. Okay, yes, what, did you, what did you do in the recovery of this item? I, 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 
after recovering the or, item? Um, what did you do at the scene? When you, how did you recover this item? Oh, I, I, I make some some plaster and I pour into the the type the, the the tire mark that was there on the ground. Okay. And, and now, why did you why did you do a tire cast? It's my it was my. But was does that mean that there must have been something to take an impression of? Yes, sir. Okay. The tire mark. And and is and um, has this item been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. Is it in a similar similar condition as to when it was recovered by you? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, let the re record reflect. I'm tendering to the banks the box, which will be marked as State's Exhibit 63A, and the tire cast, which has already been marked as State's Exhibit 63, for inspection and be offered into evidence. Objection, Your Honor, uh, that uh, 63 and 63A are not relevant at this time until they're tied in uh, by some expert, technician, whatever the case might be, and also that it violates the chain of custody, that the chain of custody has not been established. Your Honor. All right. Objections are noted, uh, uh, overruled at this time. These exhibits, you're offering them 63, 63A, right? They'll be admitted into evidence at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Now, permission to publish on the Elmo, Your Honor? State's Exhibit 50. Okay. Can you please read to the jury what this item entails? 40 caliber Smith & Wesson casing. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you, and just for purposes um, of record, can you please explain to the jury where this item was located? One mile east of uh, FM 255. Okay, and I'm going to ask from you. Europe, from uh, 83 North. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask you the same question about State's Exhibit 51. All right. Um, are you able to identify State's Exhibit 51? I know it's already been admitted, but how do you identify it? Case, uh, case number and, and and what I wrote on the, the envelope. Okay, and what did you write on this envelope? Can you please read it to the jury? 40 caliber Smith & Wesson spent casing. Okay. And where was this item located? One mile, one mile east of on FM 255 from 83 North. All right. Okay, now. I'm going to show you what's been already admitted to evidence in Exhibit 63. Yes, sir. All right. Um, sorry, I, I said yes because you nodded, yeah. but if you could just give a response for purposes of the record. Um, yes, so, this is the tire cast. This is the tire cast that you performed that day, correct? Yes, sir. And what's the purpose of a tire cast? To compare to, to, you know, if, if we find a suspect's uh, vehicle, we'll, we'll compare the tire mark that we left in the scene to, to his, uh, to the tires belonging to his vehicle. Okay. And you prepared this tire cast, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you.
So, what did you do after you prepared the tire cast? I took it to, to my office so it could be logged in and it be given a, a tag number. Okay, and after being placed in property, what happened to the tire cast after that? After, after being placed in property, it, it, it was taken on a later date to the, the TPS crime lab. Okay. Now, what procedures do you do in sending off something to the DPS lab? I submit a lab submittal, and but before I do that, I, I call the DPS uh, lab and I, I ask them uh, if, if, if I could take the items. And how was it delivered? Was it mailed? Was it hand delivered? It was hand delivered. It was hand delivered? Yes, sir. By who? About, uh, uh, it, it had either been pro probably myself or Mr. Gerdenke. Okay. Now, I want to talk about the next time you were activated on this case. Um, was that on September 15th of 2018? Yes, sir. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Was that the crime scene of Janelle Ortiz? Yes, sir. And do you know where that crime scene was located at? I'm on marker 15 on, on Highway uh, 35. All right, and what tasks, what tasks did you perform at that crime scene? Uh, to assist the Texas Ranger on uh, processing the scene. Okay. Did you recover any items as well? Yes, I did, sir. Okay. Permission to approach, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to show you two photos that have previously been marked as State's Exhibit 31 and 32. I'll start with 31. Do you recognize this photo? Yes, sir. How do you recognize it? I took the photo. Okay, and is it a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? That is correct, sir. All right. Um, same thing with State's Exhibit 32. Do you recognize this photo? Yes, sir. How do you recognize it? Because I, I, I also took the photo. Okay, and is it a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? Yes, sir. Okay. Let the record reflect I am tendering to defense what has been previously marked as State's Exhibit 31 and 32. For inspection, we offered into evidence, Your Honor. Can, can you approach on? Uh, uh, is 31 already in? Do you have 31 admitted? They were conditionally admitted, Your Honor. 31 and 32. Well, so they, they were admitted. I think mean, the issue was about publishing. You're going to yes, want to publish, you may publish now. Yes. <coughs> um, at this time, Your Honor, uh, we would just like to announce that we were going to be showing some sensitive photos for purposes of media or family in the room. Permission to publish? Okay. Um, Investigator Ugarte, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 31. Do you recognize this photo? Yes, sure. Okay, can you please explain what's happening in this photo? Uh, the medical examiner person is right there and uh, I, I took photos of the, I was taking photos of the tattoos. Okay, and why is the medical examiner person there? Because they're the only ones that are allowed to, to touch the body. Okay, now I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 32 now. Can you please, ex can you please explain to the jury what we're seeing here? Pre a picture of the tattoo. A picture of the tattoo? Yes, sir. And, oh. body. and um, this is the body of Janelle Ortiz? Yes, sir. And why are you taking a picture of the tattoo area? It's part of the investigation to, to, to take photo of the tattoos for of, of any any deceased person that, 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 that we encounter so, so, so they could be Identify later on. Perfect. All right. Um. Okay. Now, just to approach, Your Honor. Showing you an envelope that has been marked previously. It's going to be 
States Exhibit 39. Okay. Yeah. And now, okay. Now, you said aside from taking photos, you were also processing the scene, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. I am removing what has been marked. Previously, a state's exhibit 58. Okay. Do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. When and where did you recover this item? May I? Yes. September 5th, September 15, uh, 2018. Mile marker 15. Okay. On uh, IH 35. On IH 35? Yes, sir. Mile marker 15? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what did you do in recovering this item? Uh, after after recovering the item, or once you came across it, what did you do? I I, I secured the evidence and I, and 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 then I took it to the to the Wayne County Sheriff's Office to the office so, so it could be logged in and given a tag number. Okay, and how do you know that this is the item that you recovered that day? Handwriting case number. Okay, and can you please is it identify what is that? Yeah. My name. That's your name? Yes, sir. So is, that's your signature? Yes. Okay, and is this item, has this item uh, been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. Is it in the same or similar condition as to when it was recovered? That is correct, sir. Okay, and how did this item get to the courtroom here today? I took a set of, 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 of evidence of Robert Castillo. Okay. Spider-Man. Your Honor, let the ref record reflect I'm tendering. What's the bag that's been marked as states exhibit 39, which included an envelope, and we are tendering to defense states exhibit 58 for inspection, and we offer it into evidence. Some more dire just briefly, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, Deputy, you got the. With regards to State's Exhibit Number 58, and uh, just for purposes of the chain of custody and identification, yes, I know that you're telling this jury and us and the judge that uh, there's a, a casing in here. Is that, is that what your testimony is? Yes, sir. Okay, but right now, right here, presently, right now, from your personal knowledge, do you know? Because I can't see the casing, can you? No, I can't, sir. Okay, so uh, there's probably a casing in there, but from your personal knowledge, do you know for a fact, right this very minute, that there's a casing in here, the one that you recovered from the crime scene, from your personal knowledge at this moment in time? But, uh, not, not a guess. Do you know for a fact? No, sir. Okay. Uh, again, Your Honor, objection is relevance, uh, lack of personal knowledge, speculation, and... Uh, and your honor, we would have the, the same response, Judge. He recovers this item, and he's a sponsoring witness. His signature's on it. He uh, itemized it, collected it, and he was at the scene and processed it. Judge, the judge was noted. Objections uh, are overruled. States exhibits 39 and 58 are admitted into evidence at this time. Thank you, your honor. Permission to publish on the OMO? Thank you. Okay, let's get regard to I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 58. Okay, now, if you could please um, identify, what helps you identify the markings of what's inside of this Exhibit 58? What? Or if you could just please read what this says. Spent casing. Okay, and where was it located at? Uh, Mile marker 15, IH 35. 
Okay. And that's your signature right there? Yes, sir. Can you do that when you process the scene? You, you put your signatures on items? Um, sometimes I do. Yes, sir. Now, let's go back to, or I guess, what was there a vehicle that was located in this case? Yes, sir. Okay. On September 15th, did you process this vehicle? Yes, I did, sir. Where did you process this vehicle? At, 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 at the Webb County uh, Sheriff's Substation, which is located at 7209 H. Saunders, also known as 7209 Highway 59. Okay, and how did the vehicle get to the substation that day? It was transported by, by a record company. Okay, and once the vehicle arrived, what did you do? Once it arrived, I, I, I was advised by the, I was instructed by the Texas Ranger to, to collect the, the, the handgun that was inside the the, the vehicle. Okay. Now. Aside from. Aside from collecting the evidence inside the truck, what else did you do with the truck? I took photo. You took photos? I took photos, yes, sir. Okay. Now. Permission to approach your honor? Thank you. I'm going to show you. What's been marked as States Exhibit 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, States Exhibit 159, States Exhibit 160. Okay. I'll also show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 161, State's Exhibit 162, State's Exhibit 163, 164, State's Exhibit 165. Okay. Do you recognize these photos? Yes, sir, I do. How do you recognize these photos? I took the photos. You took the photos? Yes, sir. Okay, and are they a true and accurate depiction, each one of what it portrays to be? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, let the record reflect rendering <coughs> to defense what has been marked as State's Exhibit 154 through 165 for inspection, and we offer them into evidence. This exhibits. Yeah.
We're offering the exhibits at this time then. Yes. It's exhibits uh, 154 through 165 are admitted into evidence at this time. Permission to publish, Your Honor, on, on the ELMO? You may. Okay. Rest of your web, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 154. Can you please explain to the jury what this is? That's a pickup uh, truck that was recovered. That was the truck that was recovered? Y yes, sir. Okay. And what? Where is the truck at right now in this photo? Underneath the carport at, at the West Point Sheriff's Office substation. Okay. And that's where you process this vehicle? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 155. Can you please explain to the jury what this is? Same vehicle. Okay. And what do we see here? This is a vehicle being taped up. Okay, but this is the front of the vehicle, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 156. Can you please explain to the jury what this photo entails? Uh, the door pan the, the door driver's side door panel. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Can you please identify what co what comes out in this photo? Looks like the weapon. Okay. By weapon, you mean a firearm? Yes, sir. And that was Hang a firearm on. that was recovered? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 157. Can you please explain to the jury what this photo entails? Magazine. A magazine? What else do we see? <laughs> no, I, you said a magazine, but yes. these two items, what are they? Or how many magazines do you see? I believe two of them. Okay, and aside from the magazines, what else do you see? The handgun. The handgun? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you State's Exhibit 158. Can you can you explain to the jury what this marking is? It was placed there to to mark the handgun. Okay. And what purpose does it serve? That's an evidence marker. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 159. Okay. Can you please explain to the jury what we see here? A purse on the floor mat. A purse on the floor mat? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is taken of the same vehicle? Yeah, that's correct, sir. Okay. And this is on the passenger side, correct? That's correct, sir. All right. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 160. Okay. Can you explain to the jury what we see here? At the rear seat of the of the vehicle, is that the same vehicle. Uh, some beer cans and a, a makeup bag. All right. Uh, now, how many beer cans do you see here? Three, sir. Three? Yes, sir. And these are not regular beer cans, correct? They, I believe, they're like. 16 ounces. Okay. Are they referred to as tall boys? I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. And this this item down here, um, what what was that that you recovered from there when you took the photo? I, I, I believe it was a makeup uh, bag. Okay. And this item, um, and these were the other items that were covered, correct? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 161. Okay. Can you please explain to the jury what these items are? Two magazines. Magazines? Yes, sir. Is there any? Now, 
these dots on the back of the magazine, um, they range in the amount of ammunition that's located in the magazine, correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. And these two items here at the top of the magazine, what are those? They're live rounds. Live rounds? Yes, sir. Okay. So these items were loaded? Yes, sir. Show me what's been marked as State's Exhibit 162. Can you please explain to the jury what's in this photo? A magazine with some live rounds. Okay, and um, how many live rounds do we see here? Eight. Okay. And these were the magazines that were recovered from Mr. Ortiz's vehicle? That's correct, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 163. Can you please explain to the jury what we see here? An HK, HK 40 caliber handgun. Okay. And aside from the handgun, what else do we see? A magazine. A magazine? Yes, sir. On the side. Okay. And this magazine was in relation to this firearm? Yes, sir. All right. I'm showing you State's Exhibit 164. What do you see here? Put the handgun with, with one live round. Okay. That's one live round? Yes, sir. Where was that round located? In the chamber. In the chamber of the, the weapon? Yes, sir. So that must mean that the weapon was ready to fire if it needed to? That's correct, sir. All right. So it was topped off? Yes, sir. So, permission to approach again, Your Honor? Mark these two items. The state's exhibit 170 and 171. So you processed the vehicle? Yes, sir. We, I just showed you photos of the weapon from the vehicle. Did you process the weapon in this case? Yes, I did, sir. Okay. Now, I'm showing you what we will identify as State's Exhibit 35A. So we'll mark it as State's Exhibit 35A for identification purposes. Um, do you recognize this? Yes, I do, sir. How do you recognize this? Uh, my handwriting, uh, tag number, case number. Okay. And when and where was this item recovered? Uh, September 15, 2018 at, at the Wake County Sheriff's Office substation. Okay. And what did you do once you recovered it? I, I, I took it to my office so it could be logged into our system and, and, and be given a tag number. Okay, and now I'm going to show you what's inside of the box. I'm showing you 
what has been marked as State's Exhibit thir 36, okay? State's Exhibit 36, all right? Do you recognize this item? Yes, I do, sir. How do you recognize this item? Your Honor, we ask that it not be published and submitted to evidence. Objection. Your Honor, I'll publish it in the box, then. But okay, uh, you, you, I'm you just doing it for separation purposes because there's yeah. multiple items in this box, Your Honor. That's fine. Just, you can put the box for a certain way. Okay. okay. So, do you recognize State's Exhibit 36? Yes, sir. Um, when and where did you recover this item? September 15, 2018, at the Wake County Insurance Office uh, substation. Okay. Is there anything unique that identifies this item? Serial number. Serial number? Yes, sir. Where is the serial number located? It's underneath the, the, the gun. Okay. The gun and if you want to review it, is that the same serial number? that is located at the top of this box? Yes, sir. Okay. And this item, aside from being made safe for purposes of court, has not been altered in any shape or form? That is correct. And it is in the same or similar condition as to when it was recovered? Yes, sir. All right, I'll show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 37. Do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. When and where did you recover this item? Uh, same date, uh, also, uh, it was inside the this was inside of the, the, the handgun, yes, yes, sir. Okay. Um, what did you do once you recovered this item? I made it safe. Okay. Um, how do you know that this is the item that you recovered? Because it was placed inside the, the box when I recovered. Okay. And um, has this item been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. Is there any similar or similar like condition as to when you recovered it? That is correct. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you same question for State's Exhibit 38. Do you recognize State's Exhibit 38? Yes, sir. How do you recognize this item? My my initials, handwriting. Okay. And when and where was that item recovered? On, on the 15th of uh, September. Or at, at the sheriff's office. At the sheriff's office. South station. Okay. And um, what did you do once you recovered it? I, I, I took it to my office. It was given a tag number also and placed in the property room afterwards. Okay. And did you alter, has this item been altered, or have these items been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. Okay. And are they in the same or similar condition as to when they were recovered? Yes, sir. All right. I'm also going to show you this bag that we will be marking uh, for identification purposes as 170, 170A. So this item will be marked as 170A for identification purposes. Do you recognize this bag? Yes, sir. How do you recognize this bag? My handwriting. Okay. Um, is, is that your name right there? The, that is correct, sir. Yeah. Okay. That is my name. When and where did you recover these items? <coughs> September 15, 2018 at White County Insurance Office substation. Okay. And have these items been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. Are they in a... a in the same or similar condition as when we recovered them. That is correct, sir. All right. I'm going to hand it to you. States Exhibit 170 and 171A. Well, sorry, 170 and 171. Okay. These are the items that were entailed in this, in this bag? Yes, sir. Okay. And these are the items that you recovered that day? That is correct, sir. You recovered these items from the vehicle? Yes, sir. Okay. And they haven't been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. And they're in the same or similar condition as to when you recovered them? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, let the record reflect I am tendering to defense for inspection.
sure you're offering those exhibits at this time, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Um, it was 36, 37, 38, 170, 171. Are those the ones you're offering? There was other exhibits, right? Yes, Your Honor. I'll, uh, I'll read it into the record, Your Honor. I had 154 to 160 and 161 to 165. Are you, are you offering those at this time as well? Yes, Your Honor. Those photos, evidence around. Yeah. Yes. 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 Right. 36, 37, 38 are admitted. 170, 171 are admitted. Permission to publish, Your Honor, what's been marked as State's Exhibit 36? 170A also will be admitted. Yes, sir, you may. Thank you, sir. Okay. Investigator Ugarte, I am showing you what has been marked as State's Exhibit 130, sorry, State's Exhibit 36, okay? Um, you've, it's already been admitted to evidence, but if you could, please, could you please read the serial number of this item? One, two, three, zero, eight, zero, six, one, seven, seven, eight. Okay. And what does that serial number serve as? It identifies the, the weapon. Okay. It's identifier. And it, it helps identify who this weapon is related to? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is the weapon that was recovered from the vehicle? Yes, sir. The vehicle that you processed? That is correct, sir. The vehicle that belongs to the defendant, Juan David Ortiz? Yes, sir. All right. And along with this, with this uh, firearm, you recovered a magazine? Yes, sir. Okay. Aside from the magazine, you also recovered live rounds, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So th these live rounds were located in this magazine? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm going to show you what's already been admitted into evidence, State's Exhibit 171 and 170. Okay. So, So these live rounds were located in this magazine. That's correct, sir. This magazine, I'm going to show you right here. What number does that read? 12. 12. And you can see a live round there, right? Yes, sir. So what would that indicate that 12 on this live round, or, uh, in this magazine? This is 12 live rounds. And there's 12 live rounds in this in magazine? magazine? Yes, sir. In this magazine that was recovered in the vehicle? Yes. On the side panel? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 171. Okay. Now I'm going to show you that same circle. What number is that? 12. 12. All right. And what do you see in the circle? Live round. You see a live round? Yes, sir. So that means that this magazine is filled to the capacity of at least 12 rounds. That is correct, sir. Okay. So we have live rounds in here. We have 12, at least 12 rounds in this magazine, and at least another 12 rounds in this magazine. Yes, sir. And all these magazines, including the firearm, were found on the defendant, in the defendant's vehicle. Yes, sir. Okay. And what caliber are these rounds? 40 caliber. 40 caliber? Yes, sir. And is there anything interesting <coughs> about the fact that these are all 40 caliber casings? The, the, the same the same type of uh, casings that were located on, on, on different crime scenes. Okay, so they're the same caliber as the bullet fragments and the other casings that were located at the other crime scenes you investigated, correct? Yes, sir. All right, thank you.
You may. So I may publish to the jury. That's what you've got there. I'm showing you again what's been marked as State's Exhibit 36 for purposes of the jury. <laughs> This, this is the firearm that we just read the serial number into the record, correct? Yes, sir. And what caliber is it? 40 caliber. 40 caliber. Okay. Now, I'm going to show State's Exhibit 37. Okay. Can you identify to the jury what this is, please? It's a magazine. I'm going to show you what's already been marked as State's Exhibit 38, okay? State's Exhibit 38, how is it linked to this? State's Exhibit 37? That's 38, right? Uh, yes. Those are the, the, the live rounds that were inside the magazine. The live rounds that were located inside of this magazine? Yes, sir. Okay. And what caliber are they? 40 caliber, sir. 40 caliber. So, I know we talked about the dots right now, but on this magazine, these holes have a purpose, correct? Yes, sir. All right, and what purpose is that? Indicates uh, how many rounds you have left on the, on the, on the magazine. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 170 and, and 171. All right. So, what what are State's 170, 171? The magazine with with live rounds. The magazines with live rounds. Yes, sir. Okay, and I know I, I asked you about the dots, but what is significant about these other two magazines? They're compatible with, with the handgun. Okay, and when you see the number 12 here and this dot, the number 12 here and this dot. Yes, sir. And you see the gold trim, what does that represent? The lab rounds are inside the magazine. And it's a full magazine. Yes, sir. So these ma these other two magazines, where the live round is up to the to the top, are essentially at full capacity. Yes, sir. All right. And these three magazines were located in the vehicle. That is correct, sir. Where were they located? On the front of uh, door side uh, door panel. State's exhibit. <coughs> Fill off, Judge. I'm just going to place it on 178. <coughs> it's 178. 
The South Grizzly. That's a Bennett Mitter on here. Okay. Now. I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 156. Okay. Okay. You previously testified that that's the firearm on the side door panel? Yes, sir. Of the weapon that you recovered? Yes, sir. The weapon that we've uh, displayed here today? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm showing you 157. Yes, sir. Is it holstered? It's just placed freely. It, 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 it looks like it. Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm going to approach. Permission to approach witness, Your Honor? You may. Okay, I'm going to approach with what's been marked as State's Exhibit 172. Okay. Do you recognize this photo? Yes, sir. And how do you recognize this photo? I took the photo. You took the photo? Yes. Okay. And is it a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Your Honor, let the record reflect on tendering to the facts that has been marked as State's Exhibit 172 for inspection and the offer of evidence. Okay. Thank State's Exhibit 172 would be admitted into evidence at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. May I publish? Yes. Thank you. All right. Let's forget all that thing. This item right here, is this the holster that you recovered from the vehicle that day? I can barely, I, I can't see it. Let me, would you like for me to take it up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, investigator, we got this. <coughs> right here, located next to the seat, next to the seat belt. Uh, what do you see there? A holster. A holster? Yes, sir. And is there anything in it? No, sir. It's empty? Yes, sir. And where was the firearm located? On the, uh, on the side door panel. So the web, it's safe to say that the weapon wasn't holstered? That is correct, sir. Thank you. All right. So aside from processing the vehicle, um, what else did you do with the vehicle? Uh, tire marks. Tire marks? <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. Where did you, where did you perform these tire marks? At the Loretta Police Department, uh, Sally Port. Okay. And what is the purpose of these uh, tire impressions that you're performing? So, so it could be compared with the, with the casting that was covered, that was recovered from the tire and two five five. Okay. Permission to approach the witness, sir. All right, I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 62. Okay. Do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. When and where did you see this item? October, October 3rd, 2018. 
October. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And um, what did you do with this item? After we we did the processing, I took it to the our substation so it could be logged in into our system and placed in the property room. Okay. And how are you able to identify that these are the items that you worked with that day? My name. Your name? It's, it's written right there, sir. Okay. And have these items been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. And are they the same or in a similar condition as to when you recovered them that day on October 3rd? That is correct, sir. Okay. Now, I'm also going to show you four other items, okay? So, this, this one was marked as States Exhibit 62. This is States Exhibit 60, States Exhibit 61, and States Exhibit 59. Okay. Do you recognize these items? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. How do you recognize these items? Uh, uh, I assisted the, the, the ranger on, on, on getting tire marks that day. Okay. And and when and where were these items recovered? Same date, October the 3rd. Okay, at the Laredo Police Department? Yes, sir. And these items have not been altered in any shape or form? No, sir. And they are in the same or similar condition as to when they were recovered? That is correct, sir. All right. Now, Your Honor, permission, um, I, sorry, Your Honor, at this time we'll tender to defense uh, these exhibits for inspection and we offer them into evidence. Objection overruled at this time. It's uh, 59 through 62, is it? Yes, Your Honor. States exhibits 59, 60, 61, and 62 are admitted into evidence at this time for the jurors' consideration. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Um, permission to publish to the jury, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. Permission to have a CCC mm -hmm. counsel? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Your Honor, we'll be publishing what's been marked as States Exhibit 62 at this time. Can you please explain to the jury what we're seeing here? Uh, the tire marks. Okay, and how do you go about it preparing these tire marks? Uh, me and the ranger, would, what we did, we, we, we used Vaseline and a sponge, and, and we covered the, the, the tires. And then we pushed <laughs> the vehicle so, so we could mark the, the tire mark. Okay, and... You created these tire marks using the tires from the, the Dodge? That is correct, sir. Okay. And um, just for purposes of the record, we have a tire here. Is, is that the same? Is that one of the tires that you used that's already been admitted to evidence? Uh, I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. Let's show this to counsel. Your Honor, <coughs> let the record reflect we're showing this to counsel. These are the tire markings that were made by Investigator Ugarte and Texas Ranger DJ Salinas. tires that you used? That's correct, sir. Okay, and you created four tire impressions? Yeah, that is correct, sir. Okay, and I'm showing you what's been marked as States Exhibit 64. Um, these, this is one of the tires that you used to help generate those tire impressions? Yes, sir. Thank you. What did 
did you do after you cre generated the tire impressions? What did you do with it? I took them to, 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 to my substation so it could be logged in, in charge system, and they were given a tag number. And after giving a tag number, they were placed in the proper room. Okay, and after they were placed in the proper room, what did you do after that? I made a wrench with the, the DPS crime lab so, so I could take the, the, the tire cast and the, and the tire impressions so, it could be, so they could be compared at, the, at their lab. Did you personally take them over there? I believe I did, sir. Permission to approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Investigator, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 166. Do you recognize this photo? Yes, I do, sir. How do you recognize this photo? I took the photo, sir. Okay. And is it a true and accurate depiction of what it portrays to be? Yes, sir. All right. Your Honor, let the record reflect on tendering to defense what's been marked as State's Exhibit 166 for inspection. We offer it into evidence. Exhibit 166 is admitted into evidence at this time for the jury's consideration. Permission to publish, Your Honor? Okay. I I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 166. Okay. Um, what, what, what are we looking at in this photo? The picture of, uh, of Mr. Ortiz that was taken on September 15, 2018 at the substation. Okay, so this, this photo reflects um, how he looked and appeared the night that he was apprehended. That is correct, sir. Okay. And where did you take this photo? At the substation in the interview room. In the interview room? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. You previously testified that in 2018 you served as um, a custodian of evidence, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 173. Um, do you recognize this item? Yes, I do, sir. How do you recognize this item? My handwriting and my signature. Okay. Do you recognize the document? Yes, I do, sir. Are these... Uh, documents kept in the regular course of business with the sheriff's office? Yes, sir. And are, is it made at or near the time or reasonably after the event occurred? Yes, sir. Okay. And you, what purpose do these documents serve when you use them as the custodian of evidence? It's our record, you know, like of, of the items that are taken to the DPS crime lab. Okay. 
Now I'm going and I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 174. Okay. Do you recognize this item? Yes, I do, sir. Okay. And how do you recognize it? My signature, my handwriting. Okay. And as a custodian of evidence in 2018, when you were handling these, um, was this uh, business record kept in the normal course of business? Yes, sir. And are these made at or near the time or reasonably after the event occurred? That is correct, sir. Okay, and these are maintained for purposes of record keeping? Yeah, that is correct, sir. Okay. Your Honor, let the record reflect on tendering to defense what has been marked as State Exhibit 173 and 174 for inspection, and we'll be offering them into evidence. <laughs> We object. This is our law enforcement reports. They're hearsay. Your Honor, we are entering them as a business record. Um, they are submission forms, Your Honor, um, that are tendered to DPS judge. As a custodian of evidence, he maintained these records. They were kept in the normal course of business. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So our law and uh, uh, offense report. Okay. Subjection is uh, overruled at this time. So exhibit, exhibit 173, 174 are admitted into evidence at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to publish, Your Honor? Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Investigator we got the. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 173. And I want to point out here. Can you explain what this document is? It's a DPS crime lab, uh, lab submittal. It's a lab submittal? Yes. Okay. And what does this document serve as? Just uh, just document what what's, uh, what's being sent to, to the DPS crime lab. Okay. And is that your signature there? Yes, sir. <laughs> and what does that say right there? In, uh, uh, it was done in person that I took the items in person. Okay. So that means that you took the items in person? Yes, sir. Okay. And can you please explain to me what item number one is in this form? And let me zoom in. One HK forty caliber handgun with one magazine and, mm -hmm. and nine live rounds. So you sent off the HK forty caliber handgun. Yes, sir. With the one magazine and the nine live rounds that were located in that magazine? That is correct, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 174. Okay. <laughs> Same question. What is this document? The uh, DPS lab submittal. Okay. And is that your signature right there? That is correct, sir. Okay. And what does this mean? That I took the items in person. That you took the items in person? <laughs> yes, sir. And when you took them in person, you were submitting the items to who? Uh, the DPS crime lab. Okay. And I want to bring your attention to um, item number 32. What what was submitted here? The four tire prints. The four tire prints? Yes, sir. Those were the four tire impressions that you took with Texas Ranger AJ Salinas? That is correct, sir. And you submitted those to DPS? Yes, sir. Thank you. There. I'm going to show you again 
Marks. State, State Exhibit 173. Sorry, 173. Okay. So, under item one, if you could please read that, please, one more time. One H, H and K forty caliber, handgun with one magazine and nightlight rounds. <coughs> Serial number one two three, zero six one seven seven eight. Okay, so this form was submitted with nine live rounds. Yes, sir. And this was the magazine <coughs> that was located inside the firearm. Yes, sir. Okay, when you recovered that firearm, there was one casing in the chamber, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And we've established already by prior testimony that these magazines can at least hold 12 rounds in them, correct? Yes, sir. Because states uh, exhibits of the other two magazines, both are filled to 12, 12 live rounds, correct? Yes, sir. With one live round reaching out of the brim. Yes. So then we can assume that this firearm that was submitted was capable of holding 13 rounds in it in total. That is correct, sir. Due to one being in the chamber? Yes, sir. Okay. Permission? To approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. The witness? Yes, Your Honor. The witness. Okay, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 175. Okay. Now, you've previously testified you were custodian of evidence in 2018. Okay. Do you recognize this form? Yes, I do, sir. How do you recognize this form? It's, it, it, it's the, the property release form that is used by the Wet Pine Sheriff's Office. Okay. And is this form kept in the regular course of business? Yes, sir. All right. And these forms are maintained by the Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. And what purpose do they serve? To, to keep track of, uh, of the items that are being released. Okay. And um, was this uh, document uh, prepared at or near the time or reasonably after the event? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, let the record reflect I'm tendering to defense what will be marked as State Exhibit 175 for inspection and the offered as evidence. Uh, we object to uh, uh, State's Exhibit 175, Your Honor. So you're saying uh, not admissible in the rule because of the rule for the evidence 8038A2. So I don't refer to that law in the first one. That's all right. And Your Honor, if I may respond. You may. Um, this is a document that's kept in the regular course of business. This investigator broadcast testified that in 2018. He was custodian of evidence. These are records that are maintained for purposes of how they're handling the evidence. Right. Here's the objections over rule. State's Exhibit 175 will be admitted into evidence. Thank you, Your
You know, at this time we pass the witness. Judge, you want me to proceed right now? May we approach you on? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury is about 10.37. We're going to have uh, take a morning break, uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, again, I'll just remind you not to discuss the facts of the case, and uh, we'll call you in a few minutes. Thank you. All right, for the jury. Be ready to start in about 15 minutes. Thank you.
Court is back in session. Ready. Everyone ready? <clears throat> All right, let's bring the jury in now, please. All right, oh, have our witness come back, please. Maybe see it. <clears throat> so the state passed the witness, uh, Mr. Perez. You may proceed. Investigator Ugarte, uh, back on September the fifteenth of twenty eighteen, um, you went out to the stripes there on San Bernardo, right? And uh, yes, I did, sir. Okay. The, the one next to the garage, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? The one closest to, to the motel, correct? Yes, yes. Yes. And uh, at the time, you took some photos of the white Dodge. Is that is that accurate? Oh, yes, it is, sir. Okay. And um, we've had a, a prior hearing before, and, and I asked you if you had opened the doors and then taken photographs of the interior of the truck and to the best of my recollection you said you did not that is correct okay um now do you know were you there when the truck was opened up and photos were taken from the inside no sir okay uh and may i approach the witness your honor Are you familiar with what an inventory search is? Yes, sir. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what an inventory search is? Itemized log of, of, the, of the items that were searched. And, and the idea, we've talked about it previously with uh, Nenke, I think, but the idea is to document what's in the vehicle uh, so that in transport, once it's been seized by law enforcement, in transport, nothing can be taken or the like, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what's been admitted into evidence as Defendant's Exhibit Number 1. I'm sorry. Uh, can you tell me the title of that form, please? Uh, te Texas uh, Department of Public Safety Property Inventory. Okay. And uh, the, who had custody of the, the White Dodge uh, Ram out there, the Texas Rangers? Uh, I, I, I believe it was the DPS. Okay, well, DPS, guess, Department of yes. Public Safety, and the Texas Rangers are part of the Texas Department of Public That's Safety. That's correct, sir. Correct. And can you tell me what Defendant's Exhibit Number 1 says right here? Vehicle seats pending criminal investigation, no inventory conducted, released to Webb County SO Lieutenant Ricardo Garcia. Okay. And then uh, can you read down here again a, a second time on Defendant's Exhibit Number 1 what it says? Notes vehicle seats pending criminal investigation in store at the Webb County Sheriff's Office substation on 7290 Saunders. Let other Webb County, no inventory conducted. Okay. Um, and so this, <coughs> this document, which is DPS's own document, is basically saying that uh, no inventory was conducted. That is correct, sir. Is that accurate? Now I'm going to show you defendants, what's been admitted as defendants exhibit number six and number seven. Uh, can you tell me what those are just generally? 
uh, the photos of the, of the vehicle. Okay, and uh, this is out at that stripes at that convenience store next to the motel. Accurate? Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you can tell where the doors are open. Yes, sir. Okay, but you did not do this, and you did not take this. Not, photos. not that I would re to recall. No. Okay. Now. Subsequent to that, we have a, I mean, just by way of example, uh, states exhibit number one, states exhibit number 154, 155, and 156, which the prosecution has already talked about. But if I, you know, these are photos uh, of the same white Dodge, but already over at 7209, uh, is it East Saunders? Yes, sir. It's the Webb County substation, correct? That is correct, sir. Okay, and this is where you conducted uh, uh, a search or collected evidence from the truck, is that correct? That is correct, sir. And uh, I'm gonna show you what's been marked as defendant's exhibit number eight for identification purposes only. Can you tell me what that is? Number eight? Yeah, this is defendant's oh, exhibit okay. number eight, but. Just generally, what is that form? What it says here that it's evidence collection log. And are you familiar with that form? Yes, sir. And the date on that form? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I mean, what what's the date uh, on that um, form? September 15, 2018. Okay, and does this form contain your writing, sir? Not, not in this page, sir. Okay, what about the next page? Second page, uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, so suffice to say, th this form is the form that the Webb County Sheriff's Office that you and Nanka utilized back in 18 to log items that you collect. That is correct. Okay. Uh, we offer to evidence defendant's exhibit number eight. Let me see that. Objection. Number eight is admitted into evidence at this time. Okay. Now, now that it's in evidence, uh, this form says evidence collection log. It's dated 9-15-18 of 18, and then the location is 7209 East Saunders, which is your substation, right? That is correct, sir. And it reflects here that this is the search of the white Dodge Ram 2500 with the text, with the driver, I mean, I'm sorry, with the license plate number. Correct. Is that accurate? Okay. Now, you're the one that conducted a search of this vehicle on that date. On the vehicle, yes, sir. Okay, at the substation. And and in here, an item number one, I guess at 3:54 a.m. is when you collected the uh, HK40 caliber handgun, right? That is correct, sir. And, and there are other entries, uh, you know, along the line. But as you go along, you're logging in the times: 3:54, 3:55, 3:58. 414, you know, the like, right? Correct, sir. And uh, first of all, is this your handwriting? No, sir. So as you're collecting the items, are, are you contemporaneously logging in on some form what no, you're uh, collecting? Uh, 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 either the box or some, uh, the, paper, the paperback where I placed the mouse, put the time and the date of the, of the item that, that's collected. Okay, so if you grab, let's say, a, a woman's purse, uh, you're going to put it into some sort of container, a plastic bag, a box, or a manila envelope, and there is where you're going to log the time. That is correct, sir. Okay. And then this form, I'm assuming, is later uh, formulated. Uh, uh, yes, to, to, to put everything that's been collected, we, we put it based on the time that we, that we collected them. Okay. And, and uh, as you're collecting the items, uh, is the evidence room there at 7209 East Saunders? Yes, sir. Okay. So then you grab, let's say, the box with the handgun, and you go and put it into a secure area. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. And is that po proper police procedure chain of custody? Yes, sir. Now, we know that on the 15th, there in 2018, at some point, some items were presented to Mr. Ortiz that were taken from the truck. Mm -hmm. uh, are, you, are you aware of that even? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So let's say uh, that Ortiz was shown a, a purse with some syringes and the like. Uh, you collected the purses. You collected all the items in the truck, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. Who 
Do you recall giving it to anybody? I don't. I'm gonna have to check, Your Honor. He already testified that he did, doesn't. He didn't do that, and he doesn't know about that, about the items of, in the person. Well, I'll, I'll the question. Well, do, do, do you recall giving, as you're collecting and putting in a bag, items to Agent Salinas or Captain Calderon? No, no, no. The, the only one that, that assists me on, in reference to the items is Investigator Nenke, which is also the, the custodian of uh, evidence. Okay. Now. So, so, but you also testified that Nenke was, or, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Nenke was not the one at this hour, at 3.54 or early in the morning. He was not there. No, he, he was not out there with the vehicle, but the, he was inside the building. Okay. And so if, if you're collecting the items. Yes. And I'm assuming you, you put them in a box or a card or something, and you at some point walk to the evidence room, correct? Well, which... Which is where Nenke, I, I, I walk into, into my office with, with a system to log in the evidence is that, and that's where uh, Mr. Uh, desk is, and and he, he was a, uh, he was the one that they doing the, the tags, okay. the evidence. And, and so if I were to tell you, and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that some of those items that you collected from this truck ended up in the interrogation room with Mr. Ortiz, would you know how they got there? No, sir. Okay. Um, now, at this time, uh, at 354, when you began this search, uh, I know you're a custodian of records and a crime scene investigator, but who instructed you to begin the search of the pickup? At the Texas Ranger. And E.J. Salinas. E. Salinas? That is correct, sir. Okay. Do you know if he had a search warrant for the truck? Objection, Your Honor. It's an improper question and speculation. And Mr. Gator Ugarte just testified that he was advised to, but he doesn't know about the search warrant. No, no, I asked him if he knows. He can either say yes or no. Objection sustained. Okay. Did you have a search warrant for the truck? Objection, Your Honor. Same objection. It's a different question, Your Honor. Or Did you have a search warrant for the truck? No, sir. Okay. Defense Exhibit Number Nine. Can you just generally tell me what that form is? It's just a, it's a fire, firearm collection worksheet. And is that your report there? With it, regards to this case, it has my name, but uh, I, I believe this is. If I'm not mistaken, this is done at the Dorado Police Department. Okay, why would it have collected by Web SO investigator Ugarte? Because more like that, uh, I took the the casing so so they could uh, check them out at the police department. Okay, I, I, I'm not sure if that's the same form, but I, I believe that's that's what it is. Okay, tell me what the Laredo Police Department has to do with this Webb County Texas Ranger investigation. Well, you just testified, I'm, I'm so, so I can yeah. make it clear. You testified that this is a form that the Laredo Police Department no, uses. That I, be, I believe that that's the one they, they use. They, they, they have the, the Nibin system, I believe. Okay. Where they check the casings, like, like if it's fingerprints, but they check if it comes from a, from a, from a certain uh, weapon. So you're telling me that the, that the firearm uh, Yeah. Okay. 
So you're telling me that what's been marked and admitted as state certificate number 36A, and then 36, states 36, states 38, uh, and 37. These went to the Laredo Police Department? Uh, I don't believe, no, that, that, that if anything that's sent over there, just uh, what, casing. What, what do you know is what I'm asking you, or are you guessing? Well, I, I don't know, sir. Okay. But at some point you're saying that some of these items that have been introduced in this trial went to the Laredo Police Department? No, sir. Okay. And this, those items. And this form that is talking about this firearm, and let's verify the serial number. But you see, 123-06-1778. Yes. This form is referring to this firearm. That's correct. Right. And so you did not uh, draft this form? No, sir. And there's a comment here, inspected weapon after it was seized by WCSO. So someone inspected this firearm other than you, other than the Ranger? I believe so, sir. And it talks about it has two spare magazines? Yes, sir. And it says number of cartridges. So you're, are you offering it? You yes, Your Honor, I'm going to offer it. State to Defense is exhibit number nine. And uh, the state earlier introduced also two extra magazines, correct? Yes, sir. And in there, the, the DA told you that each magazine had 12 cartridges within them, correct? Uh, 12 rounds, yes, sir. Okay. But yet this form says that the number of cartridges in the magazines was only two at this time, whoever inspected this. You see mm -hmm. that? Yes, sir. Okay. Not 12, right? Well, it just says the magazines, so. Well, no, it, it says two. number of magazines, two. Number of cartridges in magazines, two. You see that, right? Okay. It's yes. referring to the, to the m number of shots in there, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then here where it says photograph that scene, it says unknown. You see that? Yes, sir. Condition at the scene, unknown. You see that? Yes, sir. Witness here. Thank you. Investigator Ugarte, could you please explain to the jury what is an Ivan? Data system. To, to, to my best of my knowledge, it, it, it serves like the AFIS system, which is like uh, basically what, what the AFIS system does to fingerprints, the Ivan does to casings. It, it 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 uh, it checks the markings and the casings that are that are recovered to to certain guns, and they can actually identify the the gun that was that was used to use that casing that was recovered. So essentially, it's a law enforcement database system to link to firearms. Yes, sir. Okay. And for purposes of seeing the firearms been used before, it's linked to other uh, incidents. Yes, sir. 
Okay, and why would you go to the Laredo Police Department for the Nivin system? Because the Laredo Department is, it, I, I believe they're, they're the only ones in, in, in Laredo that, that has a system, and, and, and they have it to serve all, all the surrounding agencies. Okay. So you were just doing your due diligence? Yes, sir. Approach the witness, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Let's say you left it. I'm going to be showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 177. Uh, do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm also showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 178. Do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. State's Exhibit 179. Do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. And State's Exhibit 180. Do you recognize this item? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, how do you recognize these items? It does the forms that, that were submitted to the DPS crime lab, the lab submittals. Okay. And as a custodian, you, you and Investigator Nenke both served as custodians of evidence, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. As custodians of evidence, would you keep these records in the normal course of business? Yes, sir. Were these uh, documents generated at or near the time the, of the event or reasonably after? Yes, sir. Okay, and they were maintained for purposes of the Webb County Sheriff's Office? That is correct, sir. Okay, and when you generated these reports, they were generated off of a computer that was operating properly? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, let the record reflect. I will be tendering to defense what has been marked as State's Exhibit 177, 178, Uh, Investigator Bate, yes, with sir. regards to State's Exhibit Number 177, and we know it's a laboratory submission form, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But it contains uh, two parts. Like, there, let's say just page one, it says Jose Ugarte. Page two, Jose Ugarte. But page three and page four say Nenke. Is that accurate, sir? Yes, sir. So uh, you did not submit this. Uh, it was, uh, and you're not the author of this form. It was uh, Victor Nenke. Is that accurate? I, the author of the form, yes, but I, I, I did submit the evidence. I, I actually took it. Okay. I'm trying to figure this out. It says, this is not a very good copy, but it says date submitted, right? Yes. Okay. So it says in person, right? Yes. And so let's say the first page and the second page, it says it's Jose Ugarte. Oh, yes. Now, now, the second, the third and the fourth page of State's Exhibit 177 say submitted by, in person, Victor Nenke. Yes. And it actually has his signature. So, so. Do we both uh, go? We used to go, both, uh, both of us used to go at the same time and, and take the evidence. Every, every single time? The majority of the time, yes. Now, when you submit it to the DPS li uh, uh, crime lab, wh where is it located in Laredo? Or where is it located? Uh, in the section of Clark and Loop 20. Okay. So let's look at State's Exhibit number 178 again. It says submitted in person by Mr. Nenke, page one, in person, Victor Nenke, page two, in person, Victor Nenke, page three, and in person, uh, Victor Nenke, page four. States exhibit number 179, uh, page one, Victor Nenke, in person, page two, Victor Nenke, in person, page three, Victor Nenke, in person. States exhibit number 180, page one, Victor Nenke, in person, Page two, Victor Nenke in person, and page three, Victor Nenke in person. So, is it is it your testimony literally that every single time that you went, majority of the time, terms, I'm sorry, 
majority, majority of the time, me and Mr. Gernanke went. No, that's not my question. Let's look at this one. Uh, on on 9-5 of 18, we know it's you because yes. there's your signature, right? Yes, sir. So on 9-11 on uh, of 18, it says Victor Nenke and Victor Nenke. So my question to you, to page 3 and page 4, do you have an independent recollection? Not that you think you went, most of the time you went, almost all the time you went. Do you have an independent recollection, a memory, of having gone on 9-11-2018 and 9-05 no, to sir. submit this? You do not? No. Okay. And if I ask you the same question with states, because all of these have your name, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Victor okay. Denka's name. If I ask you the same question regarding uh, 178, 179, and 180. It will be the same answer. Okay. We object, Your Honor, to lack of personal knowledge uh, and hearsay under, uh, that under Rule 803, uh, the acceptance of the hearsay rule. Uh, law enforcement records are specifically accepted from that, Your Honor. I don't know. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Your Honor, the, the, what we're trying to establish is not whether he took it, but whether he conducted and performed and generated these items in the regular course of business, Judge. This is a business record affidavit. He was a custodian of evidence. He was in charge of helping maintain these records and keeping these records for purposes as to when they were exiting, when they were being sent out to DPS. And he can testify as a former custodian of evidence that he is familiar with it and it was kept in the regular course of business for that purpose, Judge. Under 902. And under 902, Your Honor, as well. Yes, Your Honor, but under, but under 803-8A-2, <coughs> under public records, it says that uh, these records as if it's a matter observed by law enforcement are not accepted from the hearsay rule. It's hearsay. All police reports, otherwise they'd introduce the whole, their whole report, Your Honor, it's the same thing. Not to mention that he's not the author and he lacks personal knowledge. I think he's guessing about it, Your Honor. And Your Honor, if I may respond. Yes, you may respond. Investigator, Investigator Ugarte, Investigator Nenke, they both previously testified that they were both in charge of the property room. They would both help each other in processing scenes as to when the collection of evidence, entering it into the data form, and as to creating the, generating the tags, and when they would, set, they would send these items over to DPS, Judge. It's a unit. It's the evidence collection unit. They're custodians of evidence. Your Honor, we, we're going to object to a non-legal objection in the speech. <coughs> okay, just give me one second. Give me a second. Want to add something? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, just that um, we, we're also introducing this as a business record, but we're not in introducing this for the truth of the matter asserted. We're more of introducing it as a business record with the custodian of evidence, Judge. So we just want to add that to our response. If they're not so for purposes of chain of custody, Your Honor. If they're not offering it for the truth of the matter asserted, then we also object to relevance. They need to make it relevant first. DPS He's already testified as a custodian of evidence. He's familiar with the document, so. Objected to the speech. Well, both approach. approach then. Both approach.
So the exhibits um, are admitted into evidence at this time. It was 178, 179. What was the number again, Mr. Soto? Just a second, Your Honor. For the record, there were states exhibit 177, 178, 179, and 180. 180, yes. Those are admitted into evidence for the jury's consideration. You may. I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 177. Uh, can you please tell the jury what that is? Is it DPS lab submittal? A DPS lab submission? Yes, sir. Uh, the first victim on Jeffries Road. Okay. And all of these items here that are listed throughout State's Exhibit 177, these are items that were submitted in relation to that? That is correct, sir. In relation to that investigation? Yes, sir. Okay, and perm permission to publish State's Exhibit 178. Now, I'm showing you what's been marked as 178. This is, this is the submission form, another submission form to DPS, and whose name is that? The, the suspect, uh, Juan David Ortiz, and the victim, Claudine Loera. Okay. And typically in these records, all the items that are listed, wh why are they listed on, in a form like this? What's its purpose? Uh, those are the items that are they're, they're, they're taken to the DPS crime lab so they can be processed. Okay. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 179. Okay. Another submission form. Can you please read the names here? Juan David Ortiz and Giselda Hernandez. Okay. And again, these are items that were, that were sent to DPS? That is correct, sir. Okay. And finally, I'm showing what's been marked as State's Exhibit 180. Can you please read the names? Juan David Ortiz and Humberto Ortiz. Okay. So these are items that were submitted from the four separate crime scenes, correct? That is correct, sir. And these were all, and the items listed were submitted to DPS? <coughs> yes, sir. Um, now, with regards to State's Exhibit Number 177, now, can you tell me who the suspect in this in, in, is listed here? On, on, on this form is uh, Rene Davis Arce. Okay. And, uh, and so the others say Juan David Ortiz, correct? That's correct, sir. Now, did you go to the to the residence of Mr. Arce? Uh, yes, I did, sir. Yes, okay. And so here, when it talks about uh, one black and tan, six hour, nine millimeter, that has nothing to do with Mr. Ortiz, correct? These were items collected from Mr. Arce. That is correct, sir. The coat AR-15, nothing to do with Mr. Ortiz, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. So at least 
at least with regards to 177, where someone else is listed, th these do not relate to Mr. Ortiz. Is that be accurate? Some, some items, they, they don't. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. No further questions from the state, Your Honor. Mr. Belcher. Your state. Thank you. You have another witness? Yes, sir. Uh, the state calls Dr. Corrine Stern be examined by Chief ADA Maricela Jackman. Dr. Corrine Stern. Your right hand. Do you follow me for the testimony you're going to give during this trial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may take the witness time. Morning. For the record, Maricela Jackman for the state. Would you please state your full name, Dr. Stern? Yes, Dr. Corrine Elizabeth Stern. And what is your occupation? I am the Chief Medical Examiner for Webb County, Texas. Would you tell us your educational background and professional training that qualifies you as a medical examiner? Sure. I received my undergraduate degree in medical technology from the University of Mary Hardin Baylor in Belton, Texas. I then went to medical school at the University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth. I did a residency in anatomic and clinical pathology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in Honolulu, Hawaii. And then I came back to Texas and I did a, a surgical pathology fellowship here in San Antonio with the University of Texas Health Science Center. And I did my forensic medicine fellowship with the Office of the Armed Forces Medical Examiner in Washington, D.C. I also hold a master's degree in public health with an emphasis in mass disaster management. I passed my forensic boards in 2001. I am licensed to practice medicine in the state of Texas. I am a fellow of the National Association of Medical Examiners and a member of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. And uh, for the jury, you mentioned uh, pathology. Could you explain what forensic pathology is? Sure. So forensic means law. So I practice pathology or practice medicine as it deals with the law. Okay. And in your capacity as a medical examiner, do you, do you conduct um, aut autopsies? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you explain what an autopsy is and how it's conducted? Sure. So an autopsy is both the external, the outside exam, or the exam of the outside of the body, and the exam of the inside of the body, of the body, and internal examination. So the steps of an autopsy, um, what I usually do first is I examine my patient as they come in. Okay, so I look at them before anything is removed from the patient. Um, by the time the patient gets to my table, he or she has been weighed. Uh, once on the table, we take a length, okay? We can't take a height because I can't stand my patients up. So we take a length, which may differ a little bit than what that person's height was in life. I then document everything 
that that patient has on. So all the clothing, um, document any kind of medical intervention. So maybe they have an endotracheal tube that's the tube to help them breathe or EKG pads or IV lines. I document all of that and then uh, with the help of an autopsy technician, uh, the clothing and the medical intervention is removed. In the case of a homicide or a suspected homicide, we, we do have a list of certain evidence we take and also additional evidence if it is warranted. Um, we do that before the decedent is washed. Uh, once that's done, I do an external exam from the top of the head to the bottom of the toes. I'm documenting the hair color, the length, is it curly, is it straight, what color are the eyes, is there contact lenses present, are the ears pierced, is anything else on the body pierced. Uh, the condition of the teeth, if they're natural, are they in good repair or poor repair. I'm looking at the uh, integrity of the skin. Uh, we're looking for discolorations in the skin. Maybe the skin is pale or maybe it's jaundiced or yellow. Maybe they have liver disease. Uh, making sure all the extremities are present, all the digits are present. Any surgical scars. Uh, we're looking for any tattoos, any um, needle track marks or puncture sites. Uh, that's the external examination. At that time, I take a series of photographs, and then we do an internal exam. We make an, a Y-shaped incision, so we start at the tip of the shoulder blades to the point of the V, which is at the top of the sternum, and a single incision down to the top of the pubic bones. We reflect the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, like the adipose tissue, and the muscle and then the rib cage is exposed. We use a special kind of saw to take the rib cage off. It's a saw that vibrates. So it will cut through the hard, cut through the hard bone, but it won't damage the soft organs underneath. Once we take the rib cage off, the organs are exposed. I like to use a method called Rokitansky. That means in block. I can actually take from the tongue to the testicles all out in one block. I do it a little modified. I like to take my intestinal block out separately to avoid any spillage, and I take the genitourinary block, so in other words, the bladder and the, the reproductive organs or the prostate separately out and then remove all the other organs. Thank you. Now, during your career, approximately how many autopsies have you performed? Um, I'm in excess of 7,000. Dr. Stern, on September the 14th, 2018, did you conduct an autopsy on Melissa Ramirez? I believe she was a John Doe, I mean a Jane Doe at the time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you prepare a report for the autopsy of Ms. Ramirez? Yes, I did. And I'll show you what has been previously marked as, oh no, what has been marked as States Exhibit 181 and ask you if you recognize. Yes. What is it? It's a, it's a complete a uh, transcribed autopsy report that I dictated along with the toxicology report. Okay. And is it done at or near the time that you conduct the, the autopsy? Yes, ma'am. And it's prepared by you? Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I don't trans, I have a transcriptionist and I dictate it and then the transcriptionist gets it back to me. I make the corrections online and print it out and then my secretary puts it in that form. And is it, is this report uh, maintained in your office uh, as it? normal business activity? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Would it assist uh, the jury to follow along with your testimony with your rep if they could observe your report? Sure. Uh, at this time, Your Honor, I tender States Exhibit 181 for inspection and ask that it be admitted. State's exhibit, well, first of all, State's exhibit State's 181 is, it, is admitted into evidence at this time. Can you 
see that? Is it easy yes, ma'am. to read? Let me see if I can get it a little bit bigger. That's good. <laughs> Now, Dr. Stern, um, how did you identify this body as Melissa Ramirez? So Melissa Ramirez was positively identified through fingerprints in the database. Okay. And your report indicates her name on the top of the report, is that correct? That's correct. correct. And what was Ms. Ramirez's date of birth? Is that indicated on in your report? Her date of birth is not indicated on the report, sorry, just the age. Death. Her, date, her of date of death is September 3rd of 2018. And will you describe the general condition of the body when you began the autopsy? So, um, Ms. Ramirez arrived to my office with several wounds uh, that were uh, appeared to be caused by, by gunshots. Um, they were about her um, her face and her head, um, and she had one on her extremity, and she had some additional um, injuries on her face as well. Okay. At the time of the autopsy, could you tell how long Ms. Amidas had been dead when, when you received her? Well, at the time of the autopsy, her rigor mortis was resolving. Rigor mortis is the stiffening of the body after somebody dies. And there are a lot of environmental influences on it, and so we can't use it to determine an exact time of death, and sometimes we can't even get close. But since hers was resolving, um, it appeared that she'd been dead by the time she got to me um, around 24 hours or more. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Dr. Stern, I'm going to show you, and you mentioned that you take photographs as you're conducting the autopsy. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to show you, there's 16 photographs. It's States Exhibit 182, 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, and 97. Will you please review these? And, uh, and I ask you if you recognize them. Yes, these are photographs that I took during her autopsy. And do these uh, photographs fairly and accurately represent uh, <coughs> Melissa Ramirez's body as you observed them the day during the autopsy? Yes, ma'am. Page 176, 150, 182 to 197 for inspection, and we'll offer into evidence.
May we approach your honor? So, <clears throat> State's Exhibits uh, 182, was it? The first one? Ms. Jackman? 182. 182 through 197 will be admitted into evidence at this time. And I'm going to go ahead and direct our attention to uh, the, the pathological diagnosis that we have here. Okay. And we'll go ahead. I'd like to start, and I'm going to be moving this just for a second. This is States Exhibit 182. Okay. 
Your Honor, um, if I may just warn the the media and the the families that these uh, images are sensitive. Yeah, I'm sorry. The autopsy photos. What is this picture? Okay, so this is a what we call the as-is photograph of Melissa Ramirez as we put her on the autopsy table before we began the exam. And the purpose of that is just is to demonstrate or to show how she how she was when she came to me. This is this is how she presented to me. Okay. Now I'm going to show you States Exhibit 183. This is what we call an identifying photo. This is after we've cleaned her up and it's it's an ID photo of her face. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to your pathological uh, diagnosis and start with um, gunshot wound of the jaw. Okay. We explained what uh, what you observed in uh, with that injury. Okay. So she had a gunshot entrance wound. It was on the right side of the jaw in the mandible. That's the lower part of the jaw. So the upper part's your maxilla. This is the mandible, the lower jaw. So it was on the, on the right side in the lower jaw. Um, it was um, a round defect and surrounding the entrance wound where the bullet actually pierced through was gunpowder stippling. That just means they're unburnt grains of gunpowder and that surrounded the entrance wound. Now, I'm going to stop you right there. Um, I'm gonna show you States Exhibit 184. Is this the stippling that you were referring to? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and we're still on this injury. Did you have any more uh, information in your diagnosis or in your yes. findings? Yes. Okay. Yes, so the bullet perforated the skin, the subcutaneous tissue just behind the skin, the muscle, um, it went through the bone of the mandible and it terminated its path in the right side of the C6 vertebrate, the six cervical vertebrate, and that's where I recovered it. Um, the wound path was from right to left and down. Okay. And uh, you recovered this bullet. What was it, a deformed bullet? It was a large caliber, copper jacketed, deformed bullet. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 188. Is this let's see, let me do it this way. Is that the caliber? Yes, that is the bullet, the projectile that I recovered. From that injury. From that injury. Now I'm going to now ask you to concentrate on the second injury that you that you uh, identified the gunshot wound to the neck also okay she had another gunshot entrance wound it was on the right lower neck so about in this area right here um, it also was a round defect um, she did have a circumferential area of soot that surrounded that particular entrance wound um, that bullet also perforated the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, and the mid and the muscle, and it crossed the midline. So it went across the midline of the body, underneath the mandible. Okay, so underneath the lower jaw, and I recovered it in the soft tissue underneath the left ear. I also recovered a large caliber copper jacketed deformed bullet. The wound path was from right to left, slightly back to front and up. Okay, now I'm going to show you what has been marked as states exhibit. 189. How many injuries to her neck did she have? So she has um, two gunshot entrance wounds to her neck. The one that we just referred to is going to be the lower wound. This one? No, the lower one. one. Yes. Okay, so this is the one that, so you have it as injury number two? That's correct. 
This is injury number two. Yes, ma'am. And uh, when you were referring to right now with the, you said that there was some, some. There's an area of soot. It's very difficult to see in this picture. And some of it, um, once we cleaned her, may have washed off. Okay. Um, but uh, she did have a circumferential area of soot surrounding that entrance wound. Okay. Now, you mentioned also that you removed uh, a deformed bullet. I'm now showing you what has been marked as state's exhibit 191. Yes, that's the bullet I recovered um, under the left ear in the upper part of the neck. Okay. Now I'm going to refer you to your gunshot wound of the neck, injury number three. Okay, so she had another gunshot entrance wound on the right side of the neck above the one we just described. It was also a round defect. And she also had We'll go ahead and excuse the uh, I guess the juror. You wanna help him out? Can you excuse him for now? Out there, maybe. Uh, we'll go ahead and excuse the jury just for a few minutes. Um, Reminding not to discuss the facts of the case. He can be seated. You know, he doesn't have to stand just yet. If he, if, then, but everyone else can step up. Do you want? Do you want to go? Yes, can. Let the let the jurors walk out first. Medina?
District Court is back in session. The Honorable Judge Oscar Hill Jr. presiding. When the jury comes in, I'm going to just give them a brief uh, explanation. The jury was excused, just a fainting spell, just so that they're not worried about uh, what's going on. There was a, well, ready for the jury now? Let's bring them in, please. <laughs> 